Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the A Plus Tutor. Today we're going over the unit circle. The unit circle has a radius of 1. This means we can use the unit circle to define specific trig values. Remember our trigonometric functions are just sine, cosine, and tangent. So we can find these trig values at different points in our unit circle. Really, we can find it anywhere within our unit circle, but we're going to specifically focus on 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, or if we use these degree measurements in radians, pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, and pi over 3 radians, in addition to our 0 degrees or 0 radians, and our 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. Within our unit circle, our sine corresponds to our y-coordinate, cosine corresponds to our x-coordinate, and tangent is the ratio of y over x. We use theta to denote any angle within our unit circle or any angle um, instead of x or y since we are talking about x and y coordinates. So that's why we have sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta just to represent any angle. It's just a variable. So if we look at our point at 1, 0, here we have 0 degrees as our angle measurement. And since our x corresponds to our cosine and y corresponds to our sine, we can see that the sine of 0 is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, therefore the tangent of 0 is 0 over 1, which is just 0. At the point 0, 1, we can do the same thing. Here, our angle measurement is 90 degrees. So the sine of 90 is 1, the cosine of 90 is 0, and the tangent of 90 is 1 over 0 or undefined, as we can't divide by 0. Next, looking at our 30 degree measure, that point is at the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. We don't need to be able to find this point, and actually you wouldn't be able to find this point unless you measure it and you find that value. So this, is, this value is given to us, that x and y coordinate is given to us. But using that x and y, we can define our sine, cosine, and tangent at this point. So the sine of 30 is 1 half, cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over 2, and the tangent of 30 is 1 half, over the square root of 3 over 2, and simplifying that gives us the square root of 3 over 3. Our next value is also given to us, so the square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So this means the sine of 45 is square root 2 over 2, cosine of 45 is square root 2 over 2, and the tangent of 45 is square root 2 over 2 over square root 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. Last, we have at 60 degrees, our point is 1 half square root 3 over 2. So again, the sine of 60 is square root 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 is 1 half. And the tangent of 60 is square root 3 over 2 over 1 half, which is just the square root of 3. If we connect our point to a horizontal line, or if we just draw a vertical line down from our point, we can see that we can make triangles from these points on the unit circle. And typically, when we're working with trigonometric functions, we will use triangles to define different values on our trig functions. So let's look at what these triangles look like. For each of these triangles, the radius is 1, because again, this is on our unit circle. So we have three different shaped triangles just because of the angle measurement at the base of our triangle. We can identify one trig identity using Pythagorean theorem. Now for the unit circle, we won't need to use this too much, but it's always good to know. Remember, Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
Well, if we look at our triangles within our unit circle, our A is our X, our B is our Y, and our C is our hypotenuse. So we could represent that as X squared plus Y squared equals one squared. If our cosine corresponds to our X, our sine corresponds to our Y, then we can rewrite this as cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. And this is a trig identity. Again, we won't really need this too much in this lesson, but it is good to keep in mind. So based on this information and based on what we found before, the sine of 30 is one half. So that means our opposite is one half. Our opposite side from our 30 degrees is one half. The cosine of 30 is square root 3 over 2, so our base or our adjacent side is square root of 3 over 2. And our tangent of 30 is that 1 half over square root of 3 over 2, which is just square root 3 over 3. So we can see the side measurements here using our trig values. For our 45 degree triangle, our sine of 45 is square root 2 over 2, so our opposite side is square root 2 over 2. The cosine is square root 2 over 2, so our adjacent side is square root 2 over 2. And the tangent is our opposite over our adjacent, which is 1. Similarly, with our 60 degree triangle, our sine is square root 3 over 2, so the opposite side is square root 3 over 2. Our cosine is 1 half, so the adjacent side is 1 half. And our tangent is square root 3, which is our opposite side over our adjacent, or square root 3 over 2, over 1 half. So whenever we're given a triangle, we can use the word SOHCAHTOA to remember how to find our values for sine, cosine, and tangent. For sine, we have the opposite over hypotenuse, or O over H. For cosine, we have A over H, or adjacent over hypotenuse. And for tangent, we have opposite over adjacent, so O over A. Let's go over a really easy way to remember the values of our trig functions. And we're going to do this using a table. This is something that I would recommend putting on an index card. You can write that on an index card and, and use it as quick reference when you're doing homework problems or classwork or whatever that is. And whenever you're taking quizzes or tests, this can be the first thing that you write out so that you can find the value of sine, cosine, or tangent at any point on our unit circle. We have our degree and radian values listed on top, so our major points, the, the points that we are worried about in our unit circle. 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. And then the corresponding radians, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. Then we list sine first, which corresponds to y, cosine, which corresponds to x, and tangent, which is our y over x. So then going across, the way that we fill this out, we just want to remember the pattern. If we start at zero, we have to increase, and if we start at one, we have to decrease. So the only thing that you have to remember is that sine starts at zero. So on top, we write zero, and then one, two, three, and we finish it with one. Then in the middle three values, all we have to do is put all of these over two, and take the square root of each of these. So we should have zero, square root one over two, square root two over two, square root three over two, one. Let's do the same thing with cosine. But with cosine, we're going to start at one instead of at zero. So that's the only thing we have to remember. We start at one and then we use the exact same pattern, except we're going to decrease. So that means we're going to go one. On top, we're going to put three, two, one, and then end with zero on the other side. So when we start with zero, we increase. When we start with one, we decrease. Then again, for our middle three values, we're just going to put all of those over two and take the square root of our numerator. So that means we have one square root three over two, square root two over two, square root one over two, and zero. So now for tangent, all we're doing is taking the fraction that we see there. So if we look up in this column, in this first column, we have zero over one, which is just zero. 
Next, we have square root 1 over 2, or just 1 half, over square root 3 over 2, which when you simplify is square root 3 over 3. Square root 2 over 2 over square root 2 over 2 is 1. Square root 3 over 2 over square root 2 over 2 is square root 3. And then we have 1 over 0, which is undefined. So using this chart, you can find your unit circle values. Just remember, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 3, 2, 1, 0, and then just take those fractions. So, like I said, the best thing to do is just to practice writing out this chart, memorize this chart, and if you know this chart, then you can fill in the entire unit circle. The other thing to keep in mind is where sine, cosine, and tangent are positive. So if we look at our coordinate plane, we always move in this coordinate plane in a clockwise direction, or the way you can remember is if you draw a C, that's the direction that we move. So we start in the top right, move one left, move down, move one right. That's the order that we go for our quadrants. If you remember the phrase, all students take calculus, you'll know which trig functions are positive where. So in our first quadrant, quadrant one is our A, or all. That means all of our trig functions are positive. In quadrant two, we have our students, or our S. That means our sine function is positive, which includes cosecant, which is the reciprocal of our sine function. Quadrant three is take, or T, which means our tangent is positive, including the reciprocal cotangent, and sine and cosine are negative. And then in quadrant four, we have calculus, or C, which means our cosine is positive, which includes the reciprocal secant, and sine and tangent are negative. So remembering their chart, remembering all students take calculus, you can find any value on our unit circle and its sign. So now I'm going to show you how knowing all of this and having all of this memorized and, and really not memorized, having the patterns memorized, allows you to fill in this unit circle in under five minutes. So as long as you can keep in mind the pattern for your coordinates, the pattern for your degrees, the pattern for the positive and negative values, then you're able to really easily fill in the unit circle. Let's walk through finding these unit circle values. So, first, let's work our way around. I like to start with the degree measurements. What we're going to do is we're going to start in 30 degree increments. So we're going to skip these middle where we have that 45 degree or pi over 4 value. We're going to skip that first. So we're just going to keep adding 30 all the way around. So we have 0, 30, skip that line, 60, 90 at 30, 120, skip that line, 150, 180, 210, skip, 240, 270, 300, skip, 330, 360. We're adding 30 degrees as we go all the way around. Now let's go back to those lines we skipped and put in those values. So the first one is 45 degrees. All we're going to do on the next one is add 90 degrees. So 90 plus 45 is 135. Add another 90, we get 225. Add another 90, and we're at 315. So 45, 135, 225, 315. That's all our angle measurements in degrees. So now let's do our angle measurements in radians. We start at zero radians again, and this time we're going to go around using pi over six. So just like we added 30 degrees all the way around, we're going to add pi over six all the way around. So we have pi over six, skip one, two pi over six, which is pi over three, 
3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, which stays the same, 6 pi over 6, which is pi, 7 pi over 6 stays the same, 8 pi over 6, which is 4 pi over 3, 9 pi over 6, which is 3 pi over 2, 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3, 11 pi over 6, which stays the same, and 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. So all we're doing going all the way around is adding pi over 6. And one thing I'd like to mention is that whenever we have to maybe fill this out in under five minutes or quickly find that value, if we need to fill out this whole unit circle, simplifying these is just that last step. But these are all accurate values. And if you know that value and, and you can find it on your chart, then you're able to quickly find the value of that trig function at that point or at that degree. So now let's do our pi over four. So we start with pi over four and we're adding, basically we're taking odd numbers all the way around or adding two pi over four every single time. So pi over four plus two pi over four is three pi over four. Three pi over four plus two pi over four is five pi over four. Five pi over four plus two pi over four is seven pi over four. And that brings us to the end. So the other way we can do it is we have 1 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. We use odd numbers going all the way around. Last, let's put in the value for our coordinates, for our points. So let's start at our first, our very first point. We're at 1, 0. Let's take the x value. Remember, when we start at 1, we decrease. So going around, we're going to have 3, 2, 1, 0. Those middle values are all over 2, and we have a square root for each of them. So then, if we start at 0, we go 1, 2, 3. So we have 1, 2, 3, 1. Put everything over 2, and take the square root of each of those values. So we'll continue this pattern going all the way around. Let's continue with our x values. So from 0, we have 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and we finish at 1. Put everything over 2, and then add our radicals to all of our fractions. Let's do the same thing with our y coordinate. So we have 1 at that top. We go 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, 0. Put all of those middle values over 2 and add a, add a radical to all of those. Last, let's figure out our signs. Keeping in mind, all students take calculus. In quadrant 1, all values are positive. In quadrant two, sine is positive, cosine and tangent are negative, which means all of our x values are negative. Quadrant three, tangent is positive, sine and cosine are negative, so both x and y are negative. And in quadrant four, cosine is positive, tangent and sine are negative, so all of our y values are negative. And that's our unit circle. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video. I upload new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday at 1 p.m. Comment down below what other topics you'd like for me to go over. You can also find me on Instagram and on Facebook at the A Plus Tutor. Feel free to reach out to me there with any questions or comments. See you next time.